Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture is part of the Advanced Mathematics course for uh, teenagers. It's presented on unizor.com website, um, and that's where I suggest you to uh, listen to this lecture because the site contains um, very important notes, um, which basically can be studied like a textbook. Um, today's lecture will be about um, it's kind of a synergy between trigonometry, geometry, and the theory of limits. So basically it's about behavior of the function sine of x in the vicinity of the point when the angle is closer to zero. So basically it's the limit of this ratio sine, sine of x over x um, where x is measured in radians, that's very important x is radians um, so I'm going to prove basically that this limit is equal to 1 which means that if you take a look at the graph this is the sine from 0 to 2 pi so here um, at uh, clo close to the x is equal, equal to 0 the behavior of the function sine of x is very much like the behavior of the straight line which is y is equal to x this is y is equal to sine of x so they are very very close and the closer to go to 0 the more uh, the behavior of the sine of x um, looks like the behavior of the x itself. So that's what I'm going to prove. And again, I'm going to use the geometry and algebra and trigonometry, all of them together, to uh, derive this particular formula, this limit. Okay, so how am I going to do it? Uh, I'm going to, to derive it for positive x, which are going to zero. Um, with negative, it goes exactly the same thing, because the sign is um, the uh, odd function, so the ratio actually is exactly the same for a negative x as for x, because this is negative and this is negative, if you change the sign of x, right? So, let's assume that x is only positive and it goes to zero, which means I can actually consider only angles within the first quadrant. So, remember for definition of trigonom uh, uh, trigonometric functions, I was using the unit circle, right? So, this is 1. Uh, this is also 1. And the angle, let's call the angle x, and this is x radians, again. Um, B, uh, uh, let, let's put this uh, point A, so the angle X has a sign which is basically an ordinate of uh, point A on the unit circle, cosine being an abscissa, right? So the length of this is actually a sign. Now, um, Let's put this letter P. That's where the unit circle uh, intersects the positive direction of the x-axis. Um, now this would be Q. And let me connect A and P. And let's consider a triangle OAP. OAP. Well, I would like to uh, compare the area of this triangle and the area of a sector um, POA which includes this little piece between the chord AP and uh, the arc of a unit circle. Now obviously um, the, uh, the area of a sector is greater than the area of the triangle because of this little piece which I um, put some shades on it, right? So, let's just calculate exactly what's one and what's another and we will get an inequality between these uh, two um, 
areas. So the angle uh, is x, the uh, triangle I'm going to consider is AOP, its area is base, which is OP, which is equal to 1, by the way, because it's a unit circle, times height, and height is, uh, as we know, the sine of x, right? So the area is equal to uh, 1 half of base times the height, the altitude. That's my area, right? Now, let's talk about the area of sector. Um, let's call POA. So the angle is POA because it's actually measured counterclockwise. That would be a better um, designation of an angle in the sector. Now, let's just think about it. This sector is part of the entire uh, unit circle, right? Now, obviously, um, it's proportionally smaller than the uh, area of an entire unit circle, and the, the factor between them is exactly the factor between this angle and the complete angle. Right? The full angle, which is 2 pi in radians, or 3, 360 in, in uh, degrees, but we are talking about radians. So, measured uh, in radians, the whole full circle is 2 pi, and uh, this uh, sector has x as a measurement of its angle, so the areas are exactly proportional to this ratio. This is the area uh, area of uh, circle POA and this is area of full circle right so the proportionality between the angles is exactly as proportionality between the areas now this we know and this we know and this we know so, how about this area, area of circle, uh, sector POA is equal to x times PR square, but R is equal to 1 because it's a unit circle, so it's, so it's just, uh, j just pi, and divided by 2 pi, right, equals to x over 2. So, what can we say now? that the area of a sector is equal to x over 2 and the area of a triangle is sine of x over 2. Therefore, we derive the inequality between these two. The area of 1 half sine of x is smaller than the area of a sector. We got that, right? Okay. Let's go further and consider a slightly different triangle. Let's continue, let's extend this up and this vertical up. So this is the perpendicular. So this is point A. So PR is perpendicular to OP. Now we know that the perpendicular at this point is completely outside of the circle, so the area of uh, triangle POR is greater than the area of this sector. Now, the area of a sector we know, it's x over 2, and the area of this triangle I'm going to calculate right now. Now, let's think about it. If you divide this by this, you will get a tangent of this angle, right? Now, this is a catechus of the right triangle. This is the right triangle because PR perpendicular to, uh, to OP. So, 
since RP divided by OP is equal to tangent of X, RP is equal to OP, which is 1, times tangent, which is tangent. Now, this is a cachetus, and another cachetus is OP. So the area of a triangle, since this is a right triangle, I multiply this cachetus by this cachetus and divide by 2. This is 1, this is tangent. So if you multiply, it will be tangent divided by 2. And this is greater than the area of a circle. So I can do this. 1 half tangent of x. So, basically, I'm almost finished. And let me explain you why. Because now, from now on, it's just pure uh, trigonometry. Well, first of all, I get rid of 2. Uh, in the denominator, so it would be sine of x less than x less than tangent of x. Now, secondly, I will replace tangent with its definition as sine of x over cosine of x. Next, since uh, I'm talking about angle, which is a very small positive angle in the first quadrant, which is sine is equal to si sine of, uh, is, is positive. I just divide everything by sine. So I have 1 less than x over sine of x less than 1 over cosine of x. Now, if these two things are in this particular relation, if this is less than this, if I will invert, I will have an opposite uh, uh, inequality, right? It's just easier for me to deal with opposite because this one. And here I will invert as well. So I invert every number and I change the uh, inequality to an opposite, right? Because if 2 thirds is less than 3 quarters, then 3 second is greater. Uh, 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 sorry, that's the uh, way around. 2 thirds is less than 3 quarters. Uh, then uh, 3 thirds, uh, 3 seconds, uh, uh, excuse me, is uh, then 4 thirds. Right? It's obvious because this is 1 and 1 half, and this is 1 and 1 third. This is greater than this. So that's a very easy kind of a property between the uh, inequalities. And that's actually, that's actually enough for me, because now let's just think about it. I'm going to do, uh, to prove this particular thing, when x is going to 0. Now let's think about what happens with um, all these three when x goes to 0. When cosine obviously goes to the cosine of 0, which is equal to 1, right? So this goes to 1 as x goes to 0. Remember, the graph of the cosine is this. So at 0, it's equal to 1. Now, this is a constant, so it's always equal to 1. So what happens right now? This particular variable, we don't know how it behaves. But we know that its lower boundary goes to a certain limit, and its upper boundary is exactly the same limit. So basically there is no other way for this but to go to exactly the same limit. We have already considered this in one of the problems when we were dealing with limits. This is just one of the theorems which um, I have proven in, uh, in, in one of those lectures dedicated to limits. If you have two different sequences, uh, actually three different sequences in this particular case, if you have A and you have xn and you have bn and an is always less than xn and xn and this is less than bn now this has certain 
limit and this has exactly the same limit let's call L then this sequence has no other choice but to follow to, exam to, to exactly the same limit so I have proven it there and then I, I and I'm using it here so that means that sine of X divided by X uh, has a limit of 1 as x goes to 0. So basically that's it. That's the proof. What I would like to, um, to bring your attention into is, you see, this particular theorem is not only a trigonometric theorem, it's not only algebraic, it's not only theory of limits, um, it's not geometrical um, uh, theorem, it's basically a combination of everything, well, including the graphs of the functions. As I was explaining, basically, that the sign behaves in the beginning uh, close to origin of, uh, origin of uh, coordinates, very much like a straight line at, at, at 45 degrees. So, all of these things are brought together in this particular statement, in this particular theorem. And sometimes, um, you know, Personally, I, I'm always fascinated when things considered from many different uh, viewpoints are synergized, so to speak. You, you, you see that they're related in some way. Well, everything is, is related in this world, uh, but this is just a very important signification of this, of this principle. It's, it's philosophical principle, and I will have a lot, actually, of these um, may be presented to you in different lectures um, but sometimes it's really unexpected I mean you I did not expect the first time when I see when I saw something like this um, that that that's actually a true statement it seemed to me unrelated one is a sign which is completely you know trigonometric function and another is basically some real number apparently this re real number is an angle in radians then there is such a beautiful synergy between sine of x and x itself. So I just wanted to, you know, to pay attention to this little, uh, I don't know, aesthetics of mathematics. It's one of those pieces where mathematics is presenting some harmony, some beauty in its own construction. And um, according to Albert Einstein, by the way, the beauty of the theory is one of the criteria of uh, of its truthfulness. So this actually proves that to measure angles, for instance, in radians is it's really the best way to do it because then the function sine of x is presenting itself in a very harmonious way because this particular limit is equal to 1. Now consider if the angle would be measured in degrees. Well then it would be, you know, something like what, it, what, what would it be? I mean, if x is degrees, then you have to uh, convert degree into radians, so you have to multiply it by 57, whatever it is, every radian is equal to. It's kind of messy, but this looks much more beautiful. So, um, if you had any doubts that radians are a perfect measure for the angles, this is the proof that it is. So, thanks very much for listening to this lecture. Um, I do encourage you to, uh, uh, to use this uh, website, Unizor, as a, a source of educational process, not just a, so, uh, some set of lectures which you can go to for finding certain things, because the site has this educational process uh, part in it. You, if, if you sign in as a student and somebody else is, like your parent, for instance, is your supervisor, uh, then your parent can enroll you in certain classes, then you can take exams, because the exams are built into the system, and um, that would allow you basically to measure your mathematical strengths. That's it, thanks very much, good luck.